State Kremlin propaganda telling about the successes of the Russian army at the front and about 100% supplies lies and deceives Russians. Russian officer Ivan Otrakovsky refuted the lies of state propaganda telling in an interview with a Russian blogger about serious problems of the occupiers at the front. Channel One says that everything is there at the front. This is all a huge lie. In reality, there are big problems in the army, he said. According to him, the statements of Russian Z-War correspondents about the overwhelming superiority of Russians in drones and successful military production do not correspond to reality. In reality, the situation in Russian units is difficult. Recently, Russian military personnel reported new losses on the front where the Ukrainian armed forces eliminated an entire unit of occupiers. Russian military personnel continue to suffer heavy losses at the front, as military propagandists write online. During the offensive on Ukrainian positions in Donbass, Russian units suffer significant losses. The author of the Telegram channel, Zov Shkipera, reported that a whole group of Russian servicemen died in a battle with the Ukrainian army at the front. I am sad to report that our soldiers fell in an unequal battle with the Ukrainian armed forces. The entire group perished. Some, Kutish, Adler, Viskar, sleep peacefully, brothers, he wrote. The Z-War correspondent admitted that it was precisely this unit that the Russians recently collected money for an electronic warfare system, but this did not save them from destruction. Sorry guys, the propagandist added. Social media users emphasize that the Russian army command is throwing units into battle without regard for losses. Ukraine regularly releases updates on Russian losses since Vladimir Putin launched a full-scale invasion of its Eastern European neighbor in February 2022. At present, Russian forces continue to push forward in the Donbass, focusing on Pokrovsk and Volodar, two key logistical and defensive points for Ukraine. Volodar, a strategic town southwest of Donetsk, has been a target since 2014, with Russian forces making tactical gains despite suffering heavy losses. The Battle of Volodar, a linchpin in Ukraine's defenses, has cost Russia tens of thousands of men and substantial military equipment. The Russian military continues to press forward in the Donbass, making tactical gains and inching closer to important targets. Pokrovsk is one of those targets. A key logistical point for the Ukrainian military, Pokrovsk is an important part of the Ukrainian defense line. The Russian forces are within a few miles of the urban center and continue to press for its capture. A comical episode related to a statement about a possible war between the Russian Federation and NATO took place live on the Kremlin channel Russia One. Military expert Mikhail Khodarenok, who was invited to the studio of Solovyov's talk show, said that in an unconventional war, NATO would crush Russia, which has no chance in a military confrontation with the North Atlantic Alliance. All this happened against the backdrop of regular statements by the Russian authorities and the Kremlin that Russia is allegedly waging a war not with Ukraine, but with all of NATO. In the third year of the war with NATO, in Solovyov's studio, they admitted that Russia will not be able to handle a real war with NATO and will be rooted since it does not have the resources to compete with Western countries. Comments on the video on social networks. Kodarenok stated that NATO surpasses Russia by several orders of magnitude in some respects, which promises Russia a complete military defeat. According to him, Moscow's only chance in the presence of nuclear weapons. However, this has long been clear even without experts. After the Ukrainian disgrace of the Russian Federation, there can no longer be any talk of any serious Russian military power. The Russian Telegram channel Seatel Vetra comments on the video. Since Vladimir Putin launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, NATO has scrambled to present a united front against Russian aggression. Its member states have plied Kyiv with weapons and punished Russia with the most severe economic sanctions ever imposed on a major economy. But they have wavered on Ukraine's bid to join the alliance and remain divided over further financial and military support for the battered country. A mutual assistance clause sits at the heart of the Security Alliance, which was formed in 1949 with the aim of countering the risk of a Soviet attack on Allied territory. Article 5 of NATO's Washington Treaty says that an attack on one ally is considered an attack on all member states, which presents an obstacle for Ukraine's membership while it remains at war with Russia. 
A NATO pledge asks members to spend 2% of gross domestic product on defense. Though less than a third of members meet this target, Stoltenberg has said it is increasingly considered a flaw, not a ceiling. NATO's biggest player, the US, spends almost as much on defense as the next 10 spenders in the world combined. NATO's resources have been bolstered by the accession of two new member states since the outbreak of the conflict in Ukraine. Finland, which joined in April 2023, and Sweden, which was admitted in March after a two-year struggle to overcome vetoes from Hungary and Turkey. Despite Russian forces' well-publicized struggles, their overall military capability is considerable. Rescuers carried out more than 280 operations in Veneto overnight between Monday and Tuesday after torrential rains hit the northeastern Italian region. Near Padua, three rivers flooded, the Turgola and Piovego in the district of Villa del Conti and the Valdura in the district of Loreggia, where 11 people were evacuated from their homes as a precautionary measure. Rescuers were primarily activated for flooding of basement and underground rooms, water damage, fallen trees and static instability.